Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and today we're going to take a look at how to add grid-based movement into your game. So moving around like this, we are walking in a set pattern, you're always moving the same distance as you go around through your game. So let's take a look at how to do that now. So I've got a simple scene set up here. You can download these same project files, will be in the description down below the video if you want to follow along the exact same. Uh, but basically what I've got is, I've got a tile map area here, I've got uh, a player in the area and I've got a script attached to the player which at the moment has nothing in it. We've got nothing going on. So the first thing that we want to do is set up the basics of how our player can move around on a grid. So let's open up this script here. I've got a player controller script and I'm going to add in a couple of variables at the top. The first one I'm going to add is how fast we want our player to move. So public float move speed and I'm going to set that to be uh, five for now. This is just going to be how fast we're going to make our player move to the points that we want them to move to. And then the next thing we're going to add is a transform. So I'm going to add a public transform that I'm going to call move point. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to have this point in space in the world and we're going to move it to the position we want to go to next on our grid. So basically one space over to the right or to the left or up or down. And we're going to say, hey, you can move to this point and then we'll move the character at the speed rate that we have here. So let's just jump back into Unity and set that up. So I'm going to go back in here and I have on my player, once that compiles, there we go. If I click on my player here, you see we have the spaces there. And if I just drop this down, you can see I've already got a child transform of this player called the player move point. So I've got the sprite of the player as well, obviously represented here. And I've got the move point. If I just switch to this tool, you can see the move point is at the center of the player here in the grid. So I'm going to make that move point go into our script here. Then we'll jump back into our script. Oop, I collapsed it. There we go. Back into our script. The first thing I'm going to want to do is we're going to want to move our player to that point. And if we look back here, if this is a child, sorry, the move point here is a child of the player. If we move this move point, so for example, if I move it over to here, then the player is always going to try and move towards that point. So we don't want them to keep moving towards this point because if the player object starts to move like this to, to that point there, then the move point will keep moving ahead because it's a child of the player. So I'm going to just undo this. Now, obviously I could just make this not a child here, but to keep things nice and easily organized in our hierarchy, what is easier to do is in our start function of our script, just say the move point dot, uh, wait, I don't need to say transform, move point dot parent equals null. So we're saying it has no parent anymore. So then we'll just see, just very quickly, if we go back in here and play, that, if I just pause it, the player move point is no longer childed to the player. Okay, so now let's do some actual movement stuff. So the first thing we want to do is move our player. So for that, we're obviously going to need to check if we're pressing in uh, horizontal input or vertical input. So let's set that up first of all. So we're going to say if our input dot get axis raw on the horizontal axis. So if we're getting input on the horizontal axis, well, what do we want to check? We obviously only want our player to move fully in one direction or the other. We want it to move to the exact next space. And when we're using get axis raw, we're basically checking to see, hey, have we pressed all the way to the right or all the way to the left? So what we can do is say, hey, if our input dot get axis raw horizontal, we could say if it's equal to one, so that means we know we're pressing all the way to the right. But what if we want to check if we're pressing all the way to the left? Well, obviously we know we want to check if it's minus one. Uh, this should be an F for a float. We want to check if it's a minus one as well. So we could add an or statement in here to say if either of these are true, then get the horizontal, or sorry, if it's either minus one or one. So we could do that. But what's much easier is just to say, we're going to convert the get axis raw horizontal to be mathf.abs, so that's mathf.absolute. And what that means is, it doesn't matter whether it's a positive or a negative number, it'll just convert it to always be a positive number. So minus one will become one, and one will remain at one. So now we're checking to say, hey, is our horizontal input one? 
So are we pressing all the way to the left or all the way to the right? And if we are, then we'll say, okay, well, let's move our move point. So we'll say move point dot position uh, plus equals a new vector tree. And we're going to move it that amount on the x axis. So we're going to say we'll get the input dot get axis raw. And we already know that's exactly one. So we're going to move over one space either to the left or to the right. So this will, although we use the mat ABS here, that was just for us to do that in the if statement here. It doesn't affect the actual value of the input horizontal. So that's either one minus one or one. And then obviously on the Y and the Z axis, we don't want to make any changes there because we're moving left or right. So then let's do the same for vertical movement. So I'm going to just actually copy this whole thing here and replace horizontal with vertical here. So now we're checking the vertical if it's minus one or one. And then here we're saying vertical but obviously we don't want to move it on the x-axis because that's horizontal we want to move it on the y-axis so i'm going to delete that out and then put the x-axis as zero and then we're moving on the y-axis okay so let's see this in action and we're going to see why this this won't necessarily work as is at the moment so what will happen now is when i press play we're going to keep our eye on the move point because that's what we're keeping track of at the moment. So I'm just going to do this. Actually, we'll just add a little, uh, little red mark to the move point here. So now when I press an input direction, you can see oh, my move point went flying off up into the sky. And when I move to the left, the move point is moving around like crazy. So our move point is moving around all over the place. And what's happening is that our player, or sorry, our move point is just every single moment checking a, are we pressing any input? If it is, then move it ahead on their screen. And we don't want it, that to happen all the time. We only want to be able to move when our player is actually at the point that we're going to. So first thing we need to do is make our player move towards the point we're going to. So we're going to say here, transform dot position equals, so we're moving the position of the player, equals vector tree dot move towards so we're going to move our player towards our target point is what we want to do so the first position we need to say is what is our current position so we'll say uh, transform dot position then we need to know the target position we want to go towards and that's our move point so that will be move point dot position and then how fast do we want to get there we want to use our move speed multiplied by time dot delta time so that it's consistent and works across all machines that the player will always move at the same rate. Okay, so we'll save that, we'll go back in here, and we'll just see this bit in action first of all. So if I press play, we should see, there we go, our player will move towards the move point because we started off a little bit around. But you can see, as I move this thing around, our player is moving around like crazy because our move point is going way too far. So the next thing we'll do is, back in our script, we're gonna say, okay, we're moving our player, we only want to be able to input this movement whenever our player is at the move point position. So we're going to say here, if vector tree dot distance, so that's the distance, this is how we can get the distance between two points. And the two points we want to check are our transform dot position and our move point dot position. And then what we'll say is, get the distance between those two points and check is it less than or equal to, let's say 0 0.05. So we don't need to necessarily be exactly at the point. We could make this say equals zero if we wanted to, but it kind of gives the player a little bit of leeway. Sometimes sometimes you, you want your player to be able to input a little bit before they actually get to the point that they get to. So we're gonna say check and see if the distance is between those two points is less than this amount. And then if it is, then that's when we can take some more input. So now if I save this and jump back in here, we'll let it compile. And now when I play, we should see the player moves to that first point. I'm actually gonna just get this uh, player move point. We really should make that just start at zero like so and there we go now we can press play and now when i move 
you can see I'm always moving on the grid. So I can hold a direction down to keep moving as I go, but I'll always end up at exactly one point on our little array here. So perfect, we're now able to move the player around, but we're also able to do things like this. Oh no, I can walk in this water, I can walk off the screen, I can walk anywhere I want to, I can walk over these rocks, I can walk into this tree. That obviously is not what we want to happen, we want our player to hit against objects and not be able to move in certain areas. So I'm just going to stop this here. Now on my tile map grid here, I have one of these layers is a colliders layer, so if I just turn off these other layers here for a second. This colliders layer has colliders attached to it so things like these stones here and the bottom of this tree and all the water has colliders attached. So what we're going to do is do a check and see if there's any colliders at a point ahead of us as we move then you can't move to that point. So we're basically doing our check so when we move that move point position we check and see hey can we actually move here before we make the player go in that direction. So let's do that. So I'm going to just reactivate all those and then we'll jump back into our player controller script. And how we do this is we need to know what um, layer our objects are on that we're checking. So I'm going to go up the top here and I'm going to create a public layer mask that we'll call what stops movement like so and if I jump back into our project here I've already given that colliders layer uh, the layer value of stop movement so I created a layer in here of stop movement apply that to my collider so now on my player I can go here and say what stops movement well it'll be anything on the stop movement layer so we'll jump back in here and now we need to do a check whenever our player enters that area so what we're going to do is, down here, before we actually move the move point here, so after we're already checking if we're getting uh, the correct input, we're going to add another if statement here and say if, and what we're going to do is do a physics 2 overlap circle. So an overlap circle will basically draw an imaginary circle around a particular point in spa space, and then it'll allow us to check if there's any colliders within that area. And what we need to do is give it a couple of values. So the first value you need to give it is where we want that, where we want to do this check. And obviously where we want to do this check is where we want to move the move point to. So move point opposition, and then we're adding on this stuff here. So I'm going to say here, we're going to get the, we're going to do the check at move point dot position plus this new vector tree here. So I'm going to copy all of this and just pop it in there like that. And we hit a comma. And the next thing we need is how big of a circle we want to draw. So I'm going to just say this will be 0.2f. It doesn't need to be too big, uh, but just big enough to interact with. And then finally, we say what layer we're going to use. And that's what our layer mask is up here. So we'll pass in what stops movement. So now that we have this check happening, we need to wrap this in our curly brackets. But there's one extra really important thing to note, which is at the moment, this is doing our overlap circle and it's moving to the point ahead and it's doing the little check and that's fine. So what it's doing is checking and seeing, is there something ahead of me? And it's saying, oh, well, if I find a collider, that means there is something ahead of me. And at the moment, we're telling it that that's the situation where we're allowed to move. But that's the opposite of what we want to do. So instead of checking to see if there is something ahead, we're going to change this to be false by putting an exclamation mark in front of it. So now it's saying, hey, if there's no object in front of us, then we're allowed to move. So we'll do the same thing now on our Y axis. So again, I'm going to just copy this whole bit here, paste it in there, and I'm going to replace the new vector that we have here for the new vector here. Very, very simple. And then I need to make sure and close this bracket. And now if I save and jump back in to Unity, once that compiles down, oh no, I got a, an error. Where am I? 
I didn't highlight that all correctly. I think that's what happened. Yep, there we go. Uh, save uh, back in here. So now when I play, we should see that I can move. And there we go. I can't walk into that tree. I can't walk into those rocks. And I, most importantly, I cannot walk off this island. So no matter how many times I press it, I can't move around. Now, at the moment, we've got the ability to move in diagonals as well. If you don't want your player to be able to move in a diagonal like that, very simply what you can do is go here and just say, instead of just having these as two different if statements, we could add an else in here. So now these are combined and we're saying, hey, you can move horizontal or you can move vertical, but you can't do both. And because of the priority of what we've done here, where we've done horizontal and vertical, this will always interpret a diagonal input as uh, a move on the horizontal axis. So if I play here now, I can't move diagonally, but if I try and move diagonally, it just means I move to the side. So it's just a simple little fix for stopping that from happening. But personally, I don't, I, I, I'm, I, I like having the option of diagonal movement in your game. And one final thing, just to add a little bit of flavor to this, I've got a little animation on this character, this little guy. He's got a, just an idle state and a movement, which is just simply, as you can see him, bobbing up and down, not too complicated. So I, let's add a quick little bit of animation to him. So I'm gonna go up here, add a public animator called anim, and then down here, uh, we're gonna animate him moving whenever we're not close to this area. So if we are at the point, then anim set bool. I have a bool value set up on him for uh, moving. And I'm gonna set that to be false, so he's not moving when he is at his position. Uh, else, let's say anim set bool moving. And I'll set that to be true when he is not at his position. So save this, jump back in, and I'll hook up that animator. Very, very simply, oh, no, I left something wrong. I didn't close this bracket, there we go. And then we can drag this animator on there. And then when I play, he's got a bit more life and a little bit more movement. He can move around as he goes about his little adventures. So perfect. This is how we can add a very simple and very easy to implement grid movement system to your games. Thanks for watching this video. Just a quick reminder that coming up in a few weeks is the Games Plus Jam, the third community game jam that we're running. We had to delay it ever so slightly, but it just means you have two weeks extra to prepare all your game dev skills to have an awesome game jam fun. It's going to be a fun game jam. I've got a fun and hopefully cool theme set up for the jam so we're gonna have fun and we're gonna make some cool games along the way so as i said thanks for watching this video i'll be back soon with more tutorial goodness and in the meantime keep being awesome